Hello guys, welcome towards the third tutorial within this tutorial series and today we're going to edit within the scene. So just to show you guys what we already got within the scene, the floor prototype, it's very, very easy just so we can walk around on it, and the FPS controller so we can walk around. So nothing very special. Today we are actually going to add the tutorial manager within the scene, we're going to make it work. I'm going to explain a little bit about it. I'm also explain how you probably want to put it within your scene. And if you've got time left, we are going to add also the trick tutorial, which is uh, another sort. So we've got currently only the key tutorial. Um, and maybe the mouse tutorial, just depends on how much time we've got. Also what I wanted to say is we can have more uh, tutorials on this tutorial. So, well, this kind of meta, but anyway, if you want to have more tutorials on how to create, for example, um, see if you have shot all the enemies or whatever, just say it. And I can kind of make that tutorial, it will be kind of difficult, so you can actually implement it within your own game. But I can explain how you can create such a thing within your own game. But after this part, for sure you can use it within your own game. So, let's start with right click, create empty and call this the tutorial manager. So once we've got this, and we're going to add the tutorial manager script. So tutorial manager. And we see we've got two different variables. The very first one is tutorials. We actually don't need it because it's filled in automatically. And the uh, text variable, and we actually need to add that. So what we're going to do is right click, UI text. So this will automatically create a canvas and an event system. With a canvas, we just set this to a scale with screen size. So it will just fit in all screens. And towards the text, we need to do a few different things. At first, we want to change the name to that we know what it is. So this is the explanation text. And here we're just going to do something like um, there was an error. Um, please message the developer if you see this. Because directly at the start of the game, we'll change this towards another uh, text, the text from the very first tutorial. If this is still here, that means there was an error, and it means that you need to be contacted and you can fix it. Um, it can be anything, and we just need to make sure that that doesn't happen. The color is going to be set by white, and it's going to be black. And we make the alpha vertical up to make sure that you can just see it. Then we are going to hold the shift key and select the top left corner. Uh, just make sure that we'll just put it right here. And we're going to have the position of 20 minus 20. So now we're going to make it a little bit bigger so we can actually see what's happening right here. So we just kill it. So now we call it. This is not very nice, so I will probably make a little bit more interesting UE um, if you're going to create this. One advice I will give you, don't put it in the middle of the screen because that will break the flow of the game. Always put it on the side of the screen and make sure that it is like an optional thing. So for example, I can just choose to ignore it and just do the, the tutorial level at once and just make sure that well, it doesn't bother me. Anyway, we are going on. So we're going towards the tutorial manager and assign this text. So now it actually already works, except there aren't any tutorials within the scene. So we'll right click, create empty, and we're going to have here the very first two tutorials. So Tutorial 0 and 1, because we start counting with 0. We're going to call this the um, moving player tutorial. Um, tutorial, you actually don't even need to add it right here on its name, because we already know it's a tutorial. The reason we put this as a child of the tutorial manager is so we can just find it um, always within your scene. Also, um, 
make sure that you just put multiple tutorials on one game object that are connected to each other. So for example, um, we got in this tutorial, not now, but we can, uh, if this was a uh, first person shooter, we could just do that there was a moving player, that was the very first object, then that we move towards another object, so that's the second one, uh, or actually the second game object, uh, there that you for example need to access the computer, so those are two different things. Then uh, you need to move to another position, and then you need to shoot. So you've got four game objects, and they are all sorted in different categories, so you can just easily see if it go uh, wrong where it is, and well, it's just better to see what exactly is happening. Anyway, we're going to add here the key tutorial. So the order is zero, because the very first one, the explanation, and we see that here is a little bit of a problem. Because we want to have a multi-line. So for example, we want to say, uh, press this keys, uh, after that do this and, uh, and go towards that position or an anything like that, I don't know. Um, maybe you want to use multi-lines. So we're just going to add this right within our tutorial script. And what we're going to do is just add a text area and just put it from three to 10. And this is just uh, what the minimum amount of lines is and the maximum amount. And this is, well, the most used one. And this just looks nice, I think. I think. So we are just going to save it and wait until it is loaded within our C. And now we can just fill in the explanation that we are want to have the first thing. So you can move around with the keys. Um, please move around. Um, this is not very well written, but because it's just an example within this tutorial itself, we actually don't need to do anything hard. Anyway, let's just add here a size of 4, because we want to test the W, the E, the S, and the D key. Make sure that there are none of them are capitals, because otherwise it won't work. And also make sure there's only one character in every string. Also very important, don't for accent at a space, because also then it won't work. So, we are just going to test if this will work by adding another key tutorial and just uh, set the order to one and just say this, uh, put this like um, key tutorial succeed. Uh, that's not very well written, but we the thing we just do here is just to check if this will work. So we just hit play, move around with the W. All right, let's just try it. The E the S and the D. So that works. And that means that we can just move on towards the next tutorial. So this is the next tutorial. It will just do this. Currently, it's not really a tutorial. So let's just add here a small tutorial and just say, for example, um, with R, you can reload. Even though we don't have a gun here, um, in the end you know your system will work, so we can just we can just test this, and the reason why I just put it here, even though this is not the right place, but the reason I put this here is to show you guys that you can just have um, a one-time function within your script that if you reload and you're in the right scene and you're in the right position, that will happen. But you know for sure that once you hit the arrow key, it will reload. You know that it will always happen, at least if there aren't any errors in your script. That means that you can just put it right here that you can just press the R key. This is the one thing I said in the very first tutorial in this tutorial series, that you need always you need to try to make it a little bit simpler for the designer to actually add it. So we currently got this. I'm going towards the second tutorial. So we're just going to create another empty and just the second one. Just to make sure what I do right here. Um, so this um, order is weird. Just to really put it right here, that this is not the way you in the end want to have it in this uh, order within your game. But this is just to showcase all the different um, ways to actually have this. Uh, work the system. So here we are going to have 
moving towards the cube. So we just come towards our prefab folder and we're just going to add a cube, whatever. It, it doesn't really matter that much. The only reason we got it is, again, just to showcase uh, that it works and also just to check if it works. So it shouldn't be a huge problem. Anyway, we got here the cube. Um, I'm just adding so you guys can see it very clear within the scene. The pink grid on it and I just scaled a little bit down because I think it's a little bit huge. So now it's right here. It is close enough. And we are going towards the second tutorial or actually the third. So we are going towards our scripts folder. Right click, create, C sharp script, trigger tutorial. We call this the trigger tutorial because we are going to use the uh, on trigger enter function. The reason I added this within the series is because sometimes you actually um, cannot check it within the check if happening script. Um, that just happens. Uh, we need to inherit it from the tutorial. So we need to do, make it a little bit differently. So this is why we're going to add this. So what do we know? We know that only after you did the check if happening, the, we can actually start checking it. So we need to have a private bool is current tutorial and it will be false by default. So we, once we have the public override void check if happening, um, if that is happening, we can just say the is current tutorial. And that's true because it is the current tutorial. Yay. So what else do we need? Now we need the on trigger enter function. So this is the trigger tutorial, so that's kind of logical. So on trigger enter. So the very first we can do is just check if, is this the current tutorial? If it isn't, we can just directly say return. So we don't have to do anything that's after this. Then what we can do is just have the public transform hit transform. So this is the transform you are actually going to check if it's going to be there. So that can be the player, that can be the object. Um, of course, you can always do this with a tag, for example. So you got a string and on the hit tag and just check if that's the same, but we are going to do it for this example with a transform. So if the other dot transform is the same as the hit transform, that means that the tutorial manager dot instance and you see I wrote it wrong so let me just rewrite this instance dot complete tutorial so this works and we're just going to say here is current tutorial and it is false because now you aren't the current tutorial anymore so what we are going to do is we are going to add it towards the moving towards the cube so we are here we are going to add the trigger tutorial the order is 2 the hit transform is the fps controller and the explanation is going to be um, Go towards the cube. Um, I don't know. Um, you need to jump on it. I don't know. This, this, this is just an example. So um, we said two things. We said you need to go towards the cube, and that we need to jump on it. So first, we're going to add a collider because we need it. So we got a box collider that's good enough for this and we're going to make it a trigger. The reason we don't use a collider itself is that maybe you want to move through it or you need to go after it in the end. So we're just going to, oops, we're just going to move it that it will just fit on top of this object. And we're just going to make it a little bit smaller. 
So it just basically means we can jump on it. So if you jump on it, it will just trigger it. And it will so look something like this. Um, oh, this can be a little bit bigger. Again, this, this actually doesn't need to, to be that precise. In the end, it will just tell the player that it will just jump on it. Um, and if you just want the player to actually move towards the cube, you can just create this trigger a little bit uh, bigger. So for example, uh, this big. And uh, if the player will just move close towards it, it will just uh, enter this trigger. But we don't have to do it right now. So let's see what is going to happen. So we can move around. With air we can reload. And go towards the cube because we need to jump on it. So jump on it and you completed all the tutorials so this basically means we got the whole system working if you guys want more uh, examples for the tutorials please put it in the comment section and well feel free to press on the subscribe button press on the like button and tell your friends about this tutorial see you guys next time with another tutorial series bye